Hello and welcome to season three of Meet the Drapers, Brand Accelerator. Every week, three entrepreneurs pitch their startups to the Drapers and a VIP guest judge. Every episode, the judges declare a winner to move on to the semifinals. And the winner is... But here's the twist. You, the viewer, can invest in any and all of these startups. Like a company? Go to meetthedrapers.com and invest in their live crowdfunding campaign, and you can bring them back for the season finale. The crowd is voting in three of our finalists. This is your shot to invest like a venture capitalist. Now, let's make some money. Welcome back to Meet the Drapers. So great to have you back. We have a really great show today. Uh, I'm Tim Draper, a global venture capitalist. This is my dad, Bill Draper. He's a pioneer of venture capital. And my sister, Polly Draper, who is an actress and director writer of some of the funniest things you'll ever see. <laughs> and today we have two, count them, two guest judges. Uh, one is Grant Cardone. I just want to be a Draper. Okay, uh, okay well that's, Your wish is you, that's you must have seen the show before. <laughs> no, I, Welcome to the family. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Grant Cardone Draper. He, we were talking about the origin of his family name and so we just decided to change it. Yeah. Um, so Grant Draper <laughs> Sounds good. is a motivational speaker. He's written 10 books, big bestsellers, really awesome books, and uh, runs a real estate empire. And really cool, he does crowdfunding for real estate. You know how we're doing crowdfunding with you, the viewers? Well, he's doing crowdfunding for real estate. So uh, we'll hear a little bit about that, and maybe he'll have some interesting advice for our contestants on how best to crowdfund. And on, in this corner, <laughs> we have Naveen Jain, who runs Moon Express. Naveen Jain Korea. Draper. That's right. He's also what am I thinking? Yeah, right. Naveen <laughs> Jane Draper, who runs Moon Express and uh, in the Viome business and has been an enormous success. He's created, I don't know, so many unicorns, it's just hard to count. He's a real innovator. He wrote something called The Moonshot, which everybody should read because it'll get you your mind just blown. He's a real proponent for all these things that seem impossible at first, but eventually get there. Uh, one is uh, mining asteroids, and another is taking the biome and how it connects to the rest of the body and your brain and your health and your mind, your spirit. Anyway, welcome, and thank you both for coming. Thank you. Uh, Grant, why don't you start? So tell us how this crowdfunding's worked for real estate. Yeah, so I started buying real estate when I was 33 years old and I bought a single family house. Today we're buying huge complexes, 300, 500 unit complexes, 90 million to $150 million. We took a real estate portfolio, had about 300 units. We're at 6,500 units now. All income producing, cash flow positive. I buy the deals with my money. I get the debt under my name. And then we open it up on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube and say, hey, there's an opportunity here. We'll have an accredited and a non-accredited fund running side by side. So the rich guys get pushed on by the little guys and the little guys get pushed on by the rich guys. Everybody told me not to do this. We raised $256 million as of today in 20 months with no ad budget. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. And Naveen. A big part of what we're going to be talking about today is mindset. Yep. It's a very difficult thing to be an entrepreneur. How do you build a mindset uh, for success? So one of the things that I find is that most people come from the mindset of scarcity. That there is somehow finite amount of things and if somehow someone else has it, you can't have it. But when you come from the mindset of abundance, you believe that you can create more. You can create more market. You can create more opportunity. You can have more. Then everyone can have more. So you don't have to fight for what's there, but you can actually create this mindset. Set. So, you know, if you think about it, there's no reason for us to not have abundance of food, abundance of energy, the abundance of education. All these problems are solvable once we start thinking about what is possible. Half of the Fortune 500 companies will go out of business. The kings will die. That means you can be the new king. And that opportunity has never existed. This is the best time to be alive. Terrific. <laughs> I'm so glad you're a Draper. You proud of yourself? <laughs> I am. Okay, now, with that as the base, mindset, 
Uh, we've got three entrepreneurs. We're going to bring them in. They're all going to be open for crowdfunding. We're going to evaluate them and determine which of them is going to go on to the semifinals. So let's bring on the entrepreneurs. But before we do that, let's see what's going on behind the scenes. Hi, I'm Mirai, the co-founder and the CEO of Vivu. Vivo is a wellness app that guides you to a healthier lifestyle based on your body's needs. And we collect your body data with urine tests. Our users are actually healthy people who wants to be healthier, who wants to see what their body needs and become the best version of themselves. I know the show, I watched almost every episode. There are amazing investors in the field and there are people we are following already. I'm super excited. <laughs> Welcome to Meet the Drapers. Give us your pitch. I'm Mirai, the co-founder and the CEO of Vivu. And for years, I've been trying all the wellness products just to become the healthiest version of myself. You would understand me, Navi. <laughs> <laughs> I started with these variables, but guess what? All they track is step and heart rate. Then I did more sophisticated tests, like gut test, blood test, $150 vitamin D test, 23andMe. But let's be honest. They're super expensive. It takes a month to get your results. And when you got your results, there is no way to action on them. Majority of the users don't go back to their results. That is why we created Vivu. Vivu is a wellness app that guides you to a healthier lifestyle based on your body's needs. First, we add a simple urine test. Looks like this. So you can actually make your test at your home and you don't have to send it to anywhere. The second thing we change is rather than showing you numbers and graphs, we start communicating with our users with suggestions, small recipes that they can follow on and see the results instantly with the Vivo app. We track eight parameters, including your hydration, pH, ketones, immunity, and much more. All you have to do is pee on the sticks or dip it in your urine and wait for 120 seconds and scan it with your Vivo app. You can easily find it in iOS and Android store. We are selling subscriptions as low as $9.99 a month. You will get a bunch of strips that you will be able to track your development and you will see the effect of your advice directly in your results. So since we launched four months ago, we reached 10K MRR, thousands of users, hundreds of subscribers, and sold more than 20,000 tests in the United States market and we spent zero marketing dollars to reach this. How, how did you reach these 20,000? Partnership marketing, uh, through wellness subscription boxes and some corporations uh, through employees. And did they pay for it or you just they shipped it? They paid for it. So our customer acquisition cost is positive because we give it to corporations, we sell it to them, and they give it to their customers or employees, and they come back to our website and subscribing. How much does each cost? Between $9.99 to $24.99 through our website. Look for how many? Or two and a half times. Four up. strips. What, Four strips. A pack what's like what's your cost to produce it? A pack like this, we sell it between $9.99 to $24.99 on our website, and it costs us one and a half dollars to produce this like this. Wow. Margins are pretty high, averages 10x. What is your sales volume now? We shipped uh, more than 20,000 strips by now, and yeah. 10K MRR. But I mean per month. Last month, what, what was your sales? Uh, it was around $15,000. One five. One five, yeah. yeah. Are yeah. you doing anything um, to evaluate people and if their blood glucose level is too high or something, do you say, red alert, you've been eating too much sugar? Or what? what do you do any of the doctoring or do you just kind of give them the information mm -hmm. and let them figure it out? We give information and actionable advice to follow. Mostly nutritionists and lifestyle dependent. It can be even stress reducing with meditation or prebiotics for an inflammation or antioxidants for an inflammation. What are you imagining on those eight things? I still, not yeah, those. For example, UTIs is yeah? nitrates okay. in your urine. Got it. Um, immunity, we see, we, we're looking at infections, which is white blood cells okay. in your urine. And in kidney, we look at proteins, okay. which there shouldn't be in your urine. What's your biggest problem? As I told you, we started four months ago. It's a pretty young company. Four months ago. And we need uh, wow. really, really strong partners to make this 
basically available for everybody. It should be in your company's toilet, like next to tampons and mouthwash. It should be that eligible. What's, <laughs> yeah. what's your marketing plan? So we already have a really uh, dedicated user base who's been using Vivu for months now. They don't just share their insights scores, they even share their sticks with P on it. So viral effect is pretty important in this market. So it's a digital game about influencing people. Mm -hmm. Of course, we will be partnering with a lot of influencers, uh, looking for lots of acquisition uh, channels through digital and online. Uh, that's why we are fundraising right now to basically go after all these. I think what's the barrier to entry? Because everything that you mentioned, that's just off the shelf. You can, anyone can make that stick. Mm -hmm. It's literally off the shelf components, right? Urine tests as a, like a 40 year old technology. Yeah and ketone tests were already living yeah. their hype. Yeah. The technology barrier is basically, first, our image processing algorithm and everything is IP protected, but second is, we don't give you results. Like Bayer, for example, had an app for mm. urine testing with a mobile phone. It was telling you your specific gravity, mm. bilirubin, which you don't understand, like mm. normal. You understand, sure. but normal audience don't understand. We make it personalized, relatable, and actionable. That's our actually core. Uh, How many problem. other companies are doing it? At least I know of at least half a dozen who have these sticks. There is Healthy IO, for example, yeah. uh, raised a lot of money, and they're doing it partnering with doctors and hospitals, and doctors prescribe it to you. Okay. So they use it like a medical sure. test. Okay. We use it more like a wellness tracking tool. So we are the only one in the market on this. But if you go to Amazon, you will see people are already using urine test sticks to track themselves. They just don't have the tools and services enough. We're asking questions. Uh, also, we ask in, when you're registering your diet, your chronic disease background, and your even goals in balance. Do you want to eat healthier? Do you want to lose weight? And we are combining all the data to give custom advice. And in future, like partnerships like Bayer, we'll be, we will be able to give you the best suited supplements or prebiotics like these partners. How much has been invested so far? In uh, 600,000. 600,000. Yeah. And how much the company do you, do you still own? Uh, we as co-founders still own the almost 80% of the company. Wow. Terrific. It is great to have you on, your, on the you show. So Thank much. you so much to come to meet the Drapers. Thank you so much. I wrote and I look samples. forward to peeing on one of them. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was crazy. It was, I was so excited. They asked so many questions, so I was just trying to reply. But I think it, overall it went well. The thing that motivates me is the fact that we're providing a lot of people uh, something really meaningful for them. It's about health and wellness. It will be great to get Tim Draper's support, but with or without, we will become one of the best wellness apps that has ever been created, and we're so excited for the journey. So, what did you all think? Vivu. I loved it. I absolutely love it. I love her as an entrepreneur, love her passion, and I love the product. I mean, there are very few products you say, I want it for myself, and I would give it to everyone I know. It's just a no-brainer to me. I think people are so interested in themselves. Like, I know that I was like, I want to go see what the <laughs> results are right now. Yeah. I loved your idea about the dissemination in a, in a contained environment, so she gets big social presence, a big burst, rather than waiting for one company at a time to pass it out. And then there's peer pressure to check. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how, you know, what's your energy level, your ketone yeah. level today? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and you know, she has not done the good job of focusing on, like, cute people who are on keto diet, they want to measure their ketone every day, right? So if you're on a ketogenic diet, which are tens of millions of people, you go into that keto diet group, you can sell them to everyone, right? You go find one place where you have one other thing, UTI, find a group and just nail that thing, right? Do you her, think her distribution the channel is, yeah. to me, the broken part of the business? I wouldn't go after employers, what she's doing, that's a broken model. This to is a direct-to-consumer product. Yeah, totally. Do you think that the um, tests that she's doing yeah. are the best tests or the most Re, I don't most likely to be done or what I mean these are more very consumer tests and which is really what you want these are exactly the thing what consumers want yeah, to know yeah, yeah. and there are few things you can add that will give you a little bit more about the diet you can change or the summer supplement so if you can throw in a little bit of vitamin D and you can throw in some of the uric acid that can change a lot there but it's great and my point is it's a big you can have two types of strips right basic and advanced and now you can ch charge a lot more for advance. getting into it right now. <laughs> right? Yeah. If I put it basic, rich. you give it away, and then you sell them advance. <laughs> Tonight, okay, when so I'm peeing, I'll think of all of you. Yeah. <laughs>
Okay, so we're going to move on to the next uh, contestant. I'm looking forward to seeing this one. This is going to be great fun. But before we do, let's see what's going on behind the scenes. I'm Ned Lerner, the founder and CEO of Hero.Live. Hero.Live lets you watch your favorite stuff with your favorite people. If you can imagine, instead of watching with your friends on the couch, your friends can be anywhere on the planet and you can watch as if you're side by side. I grew up playing games with, with people and over time they became a social thing with a voice hooked up into them. So it really felt like you were like playing in the same room and at some point the light bulb went on and said everything should work like this. Well, this is uh, maybe cliche but a dream come true. I mean we're a thing to make like next generation TV media and it's like what better way to do it than get on TV and finally we get a nice place to, to get the message out so I'm, I'm really happy. Hero.Live, welcome to Meet the Drapers. Give us your pitch. I'm Ned Lerner, the founder and CEO of Hero.Live. We let you watch your favorite stuff with your favorite people. Talking and playing is great. It's fun, it's exciting, it's social, and it inspired us. What if instead of talk and play, we could do talk and watch? What if we could bring the best of game technology to the whole giant media and entertainment market? Hero brings the live human connection of state-of-the-art games to all media in two easy steps. First, you pick what you want to watch. Today, YouTube and Twitch, and soon, Netflix and TV. And two, you pick who you want to watch with. You send a magic link to your friends or post it on social media and to all your followers. And in seconds, you're talking and watching together. We let you watch your favorite stuff with your favorite people. That makes media more fun. Our game-like platform connects media makers to their massive audiences. We just launched our beta and already we're lining up customers with over a billion viewers to do hero pilots, including both giant sports associations and big esports leagues. Talking and watching is fun, social, and it electrifies media. So try it and see the future of entertainment for yourself. Can't I just do this on Twitch already? Uh, you can do a little bit on Twitch. Twitch is text-based. So you can go into Twitch and type, but if your friend is there, they'll probably never see your typing because there's so many other people typing. But I thought there were these Twitch uh, casters who basically are talking the whole right. time. Yeah, so, which is just like Not just texting, TV. but talking. Yeah, so the broadcasters can talk, but the audience is typing. With ours, the audience, the audience is can like, talk too. Yeah. The audience, so, so it's like the Tower of Babel, though. Uh, yeah. It could be, but that's one of, I think, our, our invention. Each group of friends has its own private box, like the private box at a stadium. So typically the groups are two to ten, but to scale we can have a hundred, a thousand, ten thousand boxes of people. And we can actually mix all the voices together to create a crowd sound, so it's really like a virtual theater, a virtual stadium. If something happens, you can hear a thousand people cheer or laugh or applaud. So how do you make money? We are B2B to C. So you go to all the game companies, you go to Activision or right. whatever, and you say, hey, we'll put product. talking into yeah. your right. product. And then once we do, is there some way you reach the end user? Is there some way you get to the C? Or is that just through Activision? We're a mobile app and a website thing. So we're on top. So you watch and your friends are kind of on top of that. It's kind of like a watching on a couch like this. So they have to sign up somehow for you right. on top of buying the game with Activision. They well, can... we set it up so that it can be integrated directly into their website. Instead of a Twitch or YouTube plugin, you just use our plugin. Works the same way, looks the same way with one extra button, the invite friends button. And if you push it, turns the mic on, you send out the invites to your friends, and within a few seconds, your friends are on the same page, watching the same thing, but now talking with you. Those friends can invite more friends and more friends. We see typically the average person invites three people which is a win for everybody if you're there talking with your friends it's fun people tend to stay longer and since we're on top you can add in call to actions buttons like buy this game subscribe to me we're talking to wagering partners so there's all sorts of additive things the analogy I like is like if you're a sports team, you really want people to come into your stadium because once they're there, you can sell them the hot dogs and the hats. Is it legal to put advertising on top of someone else's content? I thought you couldn't modify the content, put your ads on top of that. Yeah, so well, my, the best analogy I have is ad blockers. 
ad blockers are a big profitable business. No one, no one shut them down. The fact that ad blockers exist on all platforms is a sign that the user has a lot of control over what they see and how they want to see it. There have been some companies in the dot-com era where they added their own ads on top of that. They were shut down in yeah. 30 seconds. Again, we're B2B to C. Our goal is to enhance the media makers' okay. experience. If they want us to add ads, that we will. And if they don't, we won't. Again, we're we're happy to play in the background and be a partner. We where do you make money then? Yeah. yeah. So uh, globally, media and entertainment makes about 25 cents an hour. And our, our service is about four cents an hour. So it's a small incremental cost in return for, you can capture the audience's clicks, you can capture their attention, you can even capture their sentiment. You can listen, literally listen to the audience as if it's a live audience and hear if they're excited or sad or whatever. So it's, a, it's an enhancer to the existing what, What's business. the cost? What's the cost for me to have this? It's, about, it's gonna be about four cents an hour per viewer to add to your so site. What, what do I need to buy? It's, it offers a service. Okay. So the basic package is just- So how do you get it to me? Uh, it's a little plug-in you put on your website. That's you, the easiest how do, way. How, how do I find out about it? As a, as a, you can go to our website, hero.live. How, how do you get your web, me to know about your website? So our plan is to spend about 25% <coughs> of our money raised on promotion marketing sales. We're talking to Electronic Arts. We're talking to some sports leagues that have NDAs. We're talking to ESTV, Esports TV, Fight TV. If we get onto their webpage, yeah. the customers will flow in. Right. They'll pay us some. The customer and the more, yeah, it, who, hopefully the who will pay you. Like the UFC would pay you, not the cut, the end user. Right, right. Uh -huh. It's an enhancement to the existing yeah. media yeah. makers. Yeah. Right now, most media makers are very much separated from their customers, either on the other side of TV or maybe they're on the other side of YouTube. But if you can get your customer on your website, then you can do all the extra stuff. And you know who they are. You can direct message them. It gives them for the first time a real reason for people to come to your property instead of the big media company. Mm -hmm. Terrific. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, well, thanks for having me. A pleasure. Right. The experience pitching the Drapers was uh, nothing like I'd ever done before. They asked some hard questions, good questions. It shows that they understand what we're doing. We're wor busy working on our web plugin, which is our first real B2B product. It lets you take our app and just within a minute put it onto any web page, any website. I think we're probably different than a lot of investment opportunities in that you should try it yourself with your family, with your friends. It's something designed for anybody who watches TV, which is like five billion people. So, you know, try it. So what do we all think of Hero? Hero Live, H-E-A-R-O Live. I didn't, I didn't under, quite understand what it does until I saw a little bit about it. He needs to come in with a demo that shows how I'm gonna get immersed into that thing and use it every day. For me to imagine giving money for it, I gotta see how other people are gonna use it. I thought it was for a deaf, for some hearing aid thing. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a crazy name. It was uh -huh. a, it's a crazy name. It's oh. the craziest thing I've ever thought a human being would spend their time on. <laughs> it's inventing ways so that a bunch of disconnected people could watch something and make their stupid peanut gallery comments about the This is pretty thing. funny coming from an actress <laughs> yeah, where it's not they're funny. doing exactly that. No, right. I know. I don't so this like is it. Ex yeah, but it's exactly why well, I hate right. it. But Polly, they, they do that. I mean, I think I would not invest because I think it's a little hard to come, uh, figure out how he's going to get, who's going to pay him to watch this. I, mean, I don't think they'll cost, see that much value. Cost is pretty high, four cents per use per hour paying them. That's, that could add up a lot. Yeah, and it, Twitch became uh, enormous. Yeah. Twitch is watching other people play video games right. and it's... No, I know. Uh, yeah, that, that's my point. Yeah. I, I think it's... I know, and I hundreds think of that's millions, it. Yeah. Hundreds of millions of people now watch it. <sighs> I still don't understand yeah. how I people watch them. <laughs> Spectators. Spe yeah, it's just, it's just yeah. like, it's just like, I, I watch football because I played it. I'm sure these guys watch. But it's not but you about ever called, because it's they called somebody you no, really care about while you're watching yeah. the game and they're not with you. And you say, Did you see that play? Dude? Right. Yeah. That's yeah. that's why they need to change the name to Trash Talk or the Peanut Gallery. Right. Or oh, absolutely. Monday, Monday, uh, Monday whatever the Ooh, quarterback. Like thing, you know, whatever. Monday, mo Monday, Monday, Monday morning, morning quarterback. Morning quarterback. Right. Be the expert. Yeah. Uh, be the announcer. Yeah. Okay. Good. Well, let's see. We pee on a stick. We yeah. we <laughs> trash talk. We're we're really moving this thing forward <laughs> in a great right way. Very so, classy. Uh, since we are. Let's see what our third entrepreneur has to st in store for us. But first, let's see what's going on behind the scenes.
Uh, my name is Daniel Uribe. Uh, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Genobank.io. We believe we have invented a new way of storing and sharing DNA data using a blockchain-based wallet. So in 2017, uh, one of my kids was diagnosed with a genetic mutation that is causing him a pathology. I wanted to have a private repository to keep his data private while exploring the genetic algorithms. I am super excited. I've been in the blockchain space in 2015. They are like one of the most famous investors in the, in the area and I would love to be backed up by them. So let's see our third entrepreneur, genbank.io. Uh, give us your pitch. Thank you, everybody. This is a privilege for me. So my name is Daniel Uribe. I am co uh, CEO and co-founder of Genobank.io. We are a decentralized platform to enhance privacy over the genetic data around the world. So we are in the era of precision medicine, and precision medicine needs your data. It's uh, genome-guided or hyper-individualized. The objective of precision medicine is to give the right drug to the right patient at the right time. On the other hand, we have the privacy of the persons or the individuals. So we're trying to tackle that specific problem because 56% uh, of people that wants to conduct a genetic test have privacy concerns and they say that they want to own the data without being in the health system around the world. So this is our solution. It's a DNA saliva extraction kit and it's paired with a blockchain-based wallet. So we give the private key to each of the donors so they can control the access and own the, the data sets. Let's say you want to have an ancestry report. So there are companies out there providing this service. So what our platform allows them is to share only with that company one copy of the data at, at a time. But you uh, don't have access to it? No, I don't. So you sell the kit Yes. But you don't have access to the data. Correct. It's a dead business. Uh, why wouldn't you do? Why wouldn't you keep the data and just anonymize it so that at least you have something of value? Well, we are, we enable peer-to-peer -peer, uh, transactions with data interpreters. But you are selling the kit against 23andMe, which monetizes the data, and you don't monetize the data. So how can you compete with them? As a blockchain company, we monetize the network with transactions. We, we take a, a fee of every transaction. I understand, but okay. only 3 and me just got a billion dollars from GSK because they have the data for 4 million people. Yes, that is good news for uh, 23 and me. For 23 and me, but not for the users. We offer the kit the same price, and but we don't monetize their data. But that's worse. Right, but, but there be, are people who yeah. would not, who are really going to be mad at uh -huh. 23 and me, and they're going to say, "You guys have used my data, and I, and it's my data, and you've you've got it, and you're you're taking advantage of it." Well, there, this could be the blowback. Yes. The incentive for people, like I, I got inspired to do this project because my son has a mutation, right? So I want this platform to work in order for me as a father to look for clinical research or genetic interpretation algorithms, but in a private kind of way. I don't want either Helix or 23andMe or Ancestry to have my Why son's not? data. Why not, if you I want a problem solved? I don't trust them because... No, 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 my point is, if okay. you have a son that has a mutation, uh, you uh, want to give it to the world and say, guys, find a solution, here's a mutation, go tell me what to do. Yes, but to your point, I want to control and revoke access whenever I want. Well, the issue is whether people will pay for the privacy. And Instagram, by, Facebook, these social platforms would suggest that billions of people are fine with having all their information out there, including the iPhone and honestly, the Android even that I'm if they pay, you're not going to collect billions of dollars that data creates value. So data has so much value, there is no way you yeah. can ever compete with 23. And let's assume you're selling at the same price at $89, right? But they have a billions of dollars of revenue in the data. They're going to drop it down to $29. Now what are you going to do? Well, to, to your point, like uh, California Consumer Privacy Act is going to be active uh, uh, in 2020, right? So now people will be uh, legally entitled to uh, get their, their, their data erased. So. My concern But they is, can do that right now. You can download your 23andMe data right now. Yes, but you cannot make them erase. Next year you will be able. But yes. that's a question. Have you done a focus group and found that 5% or 10% of the people are saying, I would pay extra mm -hmm. so that I control my own data? And I'd pay extra, and then I'd actually get some revenue, which I'm assuming they're going to get a piece of this, for my data. Actually, even in the $99 space, there's revenue to be made. 
2,700 people we interviewed. And so 1,350 said yes. that we would like to control our own data. Better said, they don't want anyone to own their data. No, but would still, they pay for it? Would they pay for it, yeah. Oh, yes, of course. What would they pay? Uh, didn't ask. Well, that would have been the time to say, okay, good, pay now. And then find out how many of those 1,350 people will pay you because that's, what's good. that's the ultimate test. I agree, but nevertheless, we, we advertise at the same price. The same, uh, but you're price. missing the point. Yeah. Advertise at the same price and you have privacy. They don't have privacy. They can drop right. the price down to 40 bucks more. Then what? Yes, they're already doing it. And like, there's a lot of people receiving the, the, the kit as a gift. And if, they don't, they don't uh, deliver it to, to 23 and me because they have privacy concerns. No, I'm saying 20 people are there. Just, I can see themselves for $29 right now. Right. Yes, I mean, so even how will you compete with them? At eBay, you can find the kids at nineteen dollars. But how will you compete with them then? People don't doesn't want to. I mean, there's there's a segment of people that even if you give it for zero dollars, they won't give their data to. I get that person, yeah. but those are not the people. There's still seven billion people still left that will pay and take it for twenty nine bucks. I think like uh, there's like half of uh, half. I mean, that's our bet. So how do you get the word out then? How do you get the word? Hey. Privacy is a, such a big issue for you that you need to pay me. Two big uh, transformations in, in privacy laws are, are helping us. Like GDPR in Europe is making having personal data very, very expensive to the companies and it's becoming a liability, right? And here in California, again, the, the, the privacy consumers. So we make the data accessible to companies that doesn't want to uh, monetize the data by reselling it. So what we do is we give access to the information by just opening a special uh, kind of port to the data. You can still serve your, your customers, but not be uh, liable for, for the data. Or but the without custodian. owning the data, there is no use for it. That's a different business. You're saying you're going to go to the 23andMe and say, hey, use us. You can own the data, but it still allow consumer access to it. Is that what you're saying? Well, it depends. I mean, 23andMe, if, if they doesn't change their business model, if they are still pursuing like being the first company to develop like a drug for Alzheimer's, yeah. this is still a good, a good, a good model, even if it, it, it's cheaper because now they are not the custodian of the data and still can train AI algorithms, lowering the cost of... Are you hoping that 23andMe uh, gets regulated out of existence? No, uh, my dream would be to to uh, be partners with them and help them to have their 23andMe decentralized wallet. So they, they're a very good brand. Uh, I admire Anne, by the way. Uh, she was one of the pioneers in this space. But now I believe the game has some changing rules by letting the, the, the data be portable, right? And not be in control of 23andMe, right. be in so control of the. Yes. Yeah. What, what do you have invested in the company at this point? We have uh, uh, five angels and one family office from Barcelona. And how much does yeah. that? How much? 180,000. Terrific. Well, great. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming to meet the Drapers. Thank you very much. And uh, and for presenting your business. It's very interesting. Thank you very much. Terrific. I really appreciate everyone. It was awesome. Uh, it was a privilege. I mean, already being here is, is a great, great experience. I received some pushbacks, but it's exactly the battle that I want to win. It, it gives me hope that we are at least putting a very good bet on the future or the alternative future of these uh, companies that are just making a business model on, on the user's data. This is dedicated to my son and I will make sure that parents around the world will have an alternative and uh, be the, the custodians of their children's data. So, what did you all think of, of GenBank.io? I had a problem with the entrepreneur. Mm. He didn't take control. I felt he, bad for him because all of you guys were just like shouting him down. Yeah, but, it, but <laughs> the problem is he didn't take control. Yeah. And uh, he can't run a company mm -mm. that's going to be a big success uh, in my book without yeah. taking control. And he's in a, he's in a, a couple space of strong good. personalities, though. Yeah. So sure. I can understand. Yeah, but they're super smart. So what are you going to do? I mean, if you're super smart and super opinionated, the entrepreneur <laughs> has to be. That's why he's only got $180,000. But, I, but I, my heart was Maybe. going out to him. That's all I well, have to say. <laughs> you, yeah, but you wouldn't invest in him. No, but I wouldn't invest. You can't an answer hard questions. It went yeah. bad because it went bad. It, yeah. we, he didn't yeah. make it go bad. It's, 
Right. He's a nice guy. He's just smart. And he kept asking him a question. The guy's he's probably buttoned up against in his own universe. Yeah. You know, I'm surprised he didn't come back with yeah. the answer. Yeah. There's a movement. But and also you you kind of, you teed that up for he him. He did tee it up. And he, and didn't, he didn't grab it. Yeah. The data privacy movement doesn't mean you can't own the data because his whole thing is the company will not own the data. He's not saying company will own the data and also do this, uh -huh. which is too different. Right. I, yeah. thought, I thought that was what he was going to get, no, get to. No, he said no. A company cannot own the data. And I thought if the company owned the data anonymously, yeah. And, and then, then people yeah. own their individual data mm -hmm. and they could provide it. Now I it. get somewhere, right? That could be but more interesting. company not owning the data, I'm not spending all this investor money and not owning the data. And I don't buy it that people would pay for it. I don't For the privacy. Do. I think everybody's going to say, I want privacy. I can't imagine the people that said, didn't say, I, didn't, I don't want but privacy. This I want it, but I don't, I'm not going to go out of my Facebook way. Facebook is the same thing. People yeah. say, I want no ads, no nothing, but I don't want to pay for it. Yeah, yeah. So that's genbank.io, but now I'm going to need all of your help to come up with a winner of these three that you've seen. So we got genbank.io, we've got Vivu, and then we've got Hero Live. I think uh, Vivo is my choice here. It's a great entrepreneur, good business. I really think that has legs underneath it. It's a good direct to consumer. And if here is a great polling, if we all will use it, if somebody say, hey, it's for a buck, we'll all use it. And that to me is a great market fit. I, I think I'd use it once me a too. year. Okay. I'd use it. I don't think I'd, I'd use, use it. it every every day if I had if I if I had a whole bunch there. I agree. I, I like Be people fun. the best of the group. The the entrepreneur, the business sounds like it has a huge market potential. And I think as far as uh, using it, I think people would be quite interested about every month to, to find out how they're feeling. Easy to understand, good presentation. I mean, wins yeah. presentation, period. Oh, yeah, she's but, cool. <laughs> I got to say, all oh, it was a good group of entrepreneurs, yeah, and it, uh, I think it's one of the best yeah. groups we've had. Let's bring them on. So the judges have put in their input into the crystal ball, and we're going to see what the crystal ball has to say. But first, I'd like to go through and tell you three that this was really, I believe, the best episode we've had because it's such a great variety and such interesting and good businesses. So, Vivu, uh, we think that this is a great opportunity. It's going to be very interesting. We don't know how often people will want to test, but she said she'd test every day, and I thought I might test once a year. Uh, but and I said there, once a month. And he said once a month. <laughs> so we're not sure exactly how you're going to have to manage it. You seem to have a lot of good ideas for how the business w would work as well as how the chemistry works. And it does seem as though this business could go in a lot of different, interesting different directions. Okay, with Hero Live, we're all excited about the idea of being able to trash talk while we're watching a game, whether it's a sports game or a, the Academy Awards or a video game. Uh, there's some great opportunity there. The concerns that we have revolve around the idea that you are ultimately at the mercy of Activision, Electronic Arts, Major League Baseball, whatever, and they can squeeze you down and they can go use somebody else just as easily. You don't have end user control, and so that was one of our, our major issues. Gen Bank, we thought that this was a really uh, interesting opportunity. You know, clearly there was a very loud voice saying that, what are you doing? You're missing out on the data. The data's the whole value, and I think possible investors will have to look and determine whether this is a movement that is going to get so strong mm -hmm. that people are going to say, you cannot use my data and big class action lawsuits against 23andMe and all yeah. that, or 23andMe keeps doing what they're doing, creates lots of value, lots of data, and then there's really no business for somebody who says, hey, you don't have to share your data here. Uh, because otherwise, I think you're going to be like peeing into the wind. With that, I think what I'll do is uh, I'm going to consult the crystal ball, and we're just going to have to see what happens. All right, is it Gen Bank? Is it Vivo? <laughs> is it 
Hero. Jim Bang, Vivu, Hero. <laughs> it is Vivu. Congratulations. <laughs> Terrific. Uh, so congratulations. You now move to our semi-final round, and you get $10,000 investment plus a $20,000 uh, investment in brand that will would convert to equity. You also get crowdfunding, which all of you do get, and you get a chance to go for the, the big finale, which could be much bigger money. And for you two, uh, you're not out of the game just yet. The viewers can vote you into the finals, mm -hmm. and you can also crowdfund and hopefully become big, huge successes. And so uh, we can all uh, celebrate the great success of Meet the Drapers. So see you next week on Meet, Meet the, the Drapers! Drapers! When Satoshi Nakamoto made a token perfecto. Wait a second, you pee on that. Yep. And then. Uh, is it one use? Yeah. One use. And it is do I get to pee on one of these? Yes, I wrote you so you can get to pee on this. Okay. Yeah. And when do I get to do that? Uh, Wait, you can go I'm now. To I want to see right I want to see if I'm hydrated. Yes, I think I'm yeah. dehydrated. Tonight, okay, so when I'm peeing, I'll think of all of you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Is lost or unclaimed. It's still unclaimed. The world is right, Baker Shock Bureau.